Hi, and welcome to video 2.2, .2, where we're going to be talking about electron configurations. So what does the word configuration mean? It's kind of the arrangement of. So we're going to be looking at how the electrons are arranged around the atom, much more specifically than we were looking at in the Bohr model. So let's talk about the first points here. Electrons are arranged in an ascending principal energy level, what we call the N. That's divided up into sublevels and individual orbitals within each sublevel. Now this principal energy level N is, the, is actually related to the distance of those orbitals from the nucleus. So looking at this drawing on the right, our first principal energy level is very close to the nucleus, energy level 1. Principal energy level 2 is a little further away. Principal energy level 3 is further away than that, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. So they're getting further and further away the higher the principal energy level becomes. Now when I think about the arrangement of these electrons, they all kind of fit within the same architecture. I like to think about it as kind of a hotel for electrons. So they're arranged in an ascending energy. Electrons fill from the lowest available energy level to the higher energy levels. So they go from the bottom to the top. Within each energy level, there are sublevels. The number of sublevels equals the principal energy level. So the first energy level has one sublevel. Energy level two has two sublevels. Principal energy level three has three sublevels, etc. And these sublevels themselves indicate the shape of the orbital. And we'll talk a lot more about that as we go on. These sublevels themselves, there are four types S, P, D, and F. They actually um, stand for kind of a historic reason how we know these exist. The S stands for simple, P for principal, D for diffuse, F for fundamental, and they're the results of spectral lines that we will study in our laboratory. So the S, P, D, and F are the four types of sublevels, and these are indicative of specific shapes. Now the sublevels themselves contain orbitals, which are regions that can hold up to two electrons each. They're like little rooms that can hold electrons. So the S sublevel has one orbital, thus it can hold two electrons. The P has three different orbitals, two in each makes six electrons in a P. A D has five orbitals, so it can hold up to ten electrons. And the F has seven, which means it can hold up to fourteen electrons. So principal energy level one has one sublevel. That's the S sublevel, and it can hold two electrons. Principal energy level two has two sublevels, an S and a P. Thus, it can hold eight electrons, two in its S, six in its P. Total of eight. Principal energy level three has three different sublevels, the S, the P, and the D. Thus, it can hold 18 electrons, two in its S, six in its P, and 10 in its D. And principal energy level 4 has four sublevels, S, P, D, and F. That's going to hold 32 electrons, 2 in the S, 6 in the P, 10 in the D, and 14 in the F. And the darn principal energy levels don't always fill up before electrons start jumping into higher principal energy levels. There's overlapping of the different types of sublevels. So, for example, 1s is here, 2s is here, 2p is higher than that, 3s is there, 3p is here, 4s is here, but then the 3d is lower in energy than the 4p, and things start to get confusing because I'm filling up energy level 3 before I've completed energy level 4, hence the grrr. But not to worry, the filling order is actually provided by the periodic table. So as we look at this periodic table, there's a couple things we need to know. When viewing these periodic tables in this context, it's helpful to think of helium actually being that square right there. We'll pretend it's not over there. Now, when we look at this periodic table, we have different regions of the periodic table. So we have this block, which we call the S block. 
we have this block here, which is called the P block. We have this block here, which is the D block. And we have this block here, which is called the F block. And if we go back and talk about what we have covered just a second ago, principal energy level one has only one sublevel. That's the S block. So the first S that's available belongs to energy level one. Thus that little area is the one S block. For below that, we have our two S block. Below that, our three S. So we're increasing in principal energy level here but these are all S blocks. Now jumping over to our green highlighted area, the P block, our first P becomes available at energy level two. Energy level one has only one S. Energy level two has two sublevels, the S and the P. So the first P that becomes available is the two P sublevel. And below that we would have 3p, below that the 4p, below that we have the 5p, etc. Now the central region in the blue are the d sublevels. First energy level 1, energy level 1 has only one sublevel s. Energy level 2 has the s and the p. Principal energy level 3 has an s, a p, and a d. So our first d arrives at energy level 3. And below that would be 4, etc. And as you might expect, down here are the F blocks. The first F available is 4F. Below that we have 5F. And one of the things we talked about was that, so when we look at S sublevels, we said there's only one orbital in an S sublevel. How wide is the S block? It's too wide, meaning that if each were responsible for one electron, there could be two electrons in each sublevel. There's only one orbital needed. Each orbital can hold two electrons, so the S's only have one orbital. There's the 1S orbital, the 2S orbital, the 3S orbital, etc. P block, there are three different P orbitals. So if each orbital can hold two electrons and there's three of them, how wide is our block here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six wide, three orbitals, two electrons each. There are five d orbitals, thus this whole d block is ten wide. And down here, our f block has seven orbitals, so it is fourteen wide. Now, very simply, to understand the filling order in the periodic table, we just sim simply need to read this like a book. So, the first orbital to get filled up is the 1s. Then we run out of room, so we come back to the new line. Then we go to our 2s. Then we go to our 2p. Then we jump to our 3s. Then we go to our 3p. Then we would fill our 4s. Then back to 3d. Then up to 4p. After 4p is full, we go to the 5s, then to the 4d, then to the 5p, then we go to 6s. Now here's where things get weird. So numerically, we fill up 6s, we actually come down to the 4f next. And if you look at your periodic table, you'll see the numbers will tell you you have to fill up 4F before you can start filling up the 5D. So that whole section, the F block, is actually removed from the periodic table and it's kind of squashed together. So after 5D, we get 6P. After 6P, we go to 7S. After 7s, we jump back down to the 5f, and again, look at your periodic table numbers. That will make more sense. After 5f, we fill the 6d, and after 6d, we fill the 7p. 
Hmm. So that all I really have to remember when I come into the class is that my first S is 1S. My first P is 2P. My first D is 3D. My first F is 4F. So it's 1S, 2P, 3D, 4F. And from there, I can number everything. So that becomes pretty simple now. It's a counting game. As long as I can remember, we're starting at 1S. This starts at 2P. This is 3D, 4F. 1, 2, 3, 4. S, P, D, F. Let's take a look at this a different way. And we're going to create what's called an orbital diagram. The old electron hotel. When I look at the lowest energy, the first to fill, we know that's the 1s sublevel. And s's only have one orbital. So I'm just going to show one little room here. Now the next orbital that would be filled up would be the 2s. After the 2s is full, we come to the 2p. Now again, that's three orbitals. P is our three orbitals because it can hold six electrons. After the 2p, we come to 3s. It's like the book, starting a new line. After 3s, we fill up the 3p. After the 3p, we get to 4s. After 4s, that's where we start our first d. So we have a 3d coming after the 4s. d is 10 wide because there are five orbitals. After 3d, we come to 4p. After 4p, we go back to 5s. After the 5s is full, where do we go? 4d. So the d's are always one behind the s's. And if it's a d, there are five orbitals there. And after 4d, we get to 5p, and we're running out of room. The writing's getting all scrunched together. And so that's kind of the electron hotel that we're going to be talking about. All elements are sort of built with this physics in mind. Now we can talk about individual elements. So let's think about our friend nitrogen. Nitrogen has seven electrons. So where would the electrons go? Well, they start at the bottom and they work their way upwards. Okay? I call this the college freshman rule because when you go to college, and you're going to live in a dorm, there's a few rules that apply. You want to be towards the ground floors because you don't want to be going up and down stairs all the time. You want to have your own room if you can get it, so your roommate isn't swiping your soap and things like that. And you're not going to partner up on a floor unless you have to. Okay, So you'll go to the lowest floor first, try to get your own room. If you can't get your own room, you'll partner up. Once everyone's partnered, you have to go to the higher energy level. You have to go up a floor. So let's take a look at that. Electrons fill from lowest energy sublevel to higher energies. Electrons fill empty orbitals within all available sublevels before they partner up. And there's something called a spin we will talk about, but they have to be spinning in opposite ways before they partner. And if levels are very close together in energy, like the 4s and the 3d are, or the 5s and the 4d, an electron may hop up to a higher energy level to produce charge symmetry, so they're all the same. I'll show that example in a bit. Atoms tend to be more stable when the entire sublevels are completely full or half full. So let's use that information here when we're talking about our friend nitrogen. Nitrogen has seven electrons. So how do they move in here? Well, I'm going to show electrons as arrows. They can either be spinning up or they can be spinning down. Okay? They have to be spinning opposite ways if they're going to be in the same room. So, seven electrons for nitrogen. How do I know nitrogen has seven electrons? That's its atomic number. So, the first electron would move into that room right there, 1s. The second one would move into the second, the first energy level as well, partnering up. So, there's two electrons. The third would go into 2s. The fourth would enter there. The fifth would be in that 2p. Now the next one that comes in would want its own room. There's six electrons. And the seventh one would occupy that room. So when we're talking about the electron configuration of nitrogen, we would say it's 1s2, meaning two electrons in the 1s, 
2s2, meaning two electrons in the 2s, and then 2p3, because there's three electrons in the 2p. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p3 is the electron configuration of nitrogen. So let's talk about sodium now. Sodium has an atomic number 11, so it's going to have 11 electrons we need to show here. So where are those electrons going to be? 11 electrons. One electron here, one here. There's two, there's three, there's four, five, six, seven in their own room, eight, nine, ten, all partnering up. One more electron to make eleven. So now I have eleven electrons. Sodium has eleven electrons. So what is the configuration? One S two, two S two, two P six. 3s1. So those are the so that is the electron configuration for sodium. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. Let's try another element. Cobalt is atomic number 27. That's what to be a Z there. Z is 27. So where would 27 electrons go for cobalt? Let's count up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Partnering up with opposite spin. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Partnering them up. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, and again, going to their own rooms, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So the electron configuration for cobalt is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and then we count the number in our D shell, and we have 7. 3d7. If you add up all those superscripts, that would be all the electrons, which should equal 27. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d7. So all we're doing is working our way upwards, partnering them up, setting them to their own rooms, then partnering them up as we move from the ground up. Now, how did I get the order of all this? That all came from our filling order back at the periodic table. So I can look at any part of the periodic table and know that, for example, this element that fits right here has to end in 4D3. There's three electrons in the 4D. Or if I'm looking at this particular element here, that has to be 3p1234. That's 3p4 in that area. What happens down here? Hey, that must be 7s2 at the very end. Or something that fits here. 4d3. So I can just look at the periodic table and actually figure out where these are once I know the pattern. All right, we're going to stop this video here for now because I know you're going to have lots of questions and we've got a lot more to go through to really hammer out the details about this.